Hey guys, welcome to quadratic function analysis. So today what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at how to analyze these quadratics and the two examples I have today, 2x plus 4x plus 2 on this red graph and negative x squared minus 3x minus 4 on the blue graph. So how to analyze these guys from the graph and then we're going to take the graphs away and then we're going to figure out, okay, if we don't have the picture, how do we analyze either of these quadratics just from their equation? So supposing we don't have the visual anymore, how do we go through and do that? The things we're going to be learning how to, how to find are the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the domain, the range, the interval that f of x is increasing, the interval that f of x is decreasing, where our vertex are, or vertices, vertex respectively, and the axis of symmetry. So we're gonna analyze all of that for each of these. Then again, we're gonna take the pictures away and we're gonna see, okay, well, how would we have done this if we were just given the equations? All right, so here we go, so red graph. Okay, the first thing I'm looking for here, x-intercepts. What is an x-intercept? An x-intercept is whenever your graph crosses or touches the x-axis. So visually, let's try to figure out where our x-intercept of this red graph is. And I have it highlighted right here. The x-intercept of the red graph is negative one comma zero, and then it never touches again. So for the red graph, negative one comma zero, okay. Y-intercepts for the red graph again, I have it highlighted here. This is the y-axis. It's at zero comma two. The y-intercept is wherever your graph hits or crosses the y-axis. So zero comma two for this y-intercept. Okay, what is the domain? So the domain of all polynomials in the domains of all quadratics is gonna be negative infinity to positive infinity. This guy's gonna take off forever in this way and it's gonna take off forever in this direction. Domain for all polynomials is always negative infinity to infinity, always. Quadratics, polynomials, always. Okay, range on the other hand. So range is how far down does this thing go to how far up? So we're measuring kind of the vertical here. Okay, well, and I'm only looking at the red graph right now. This red graph goes, and we're looking at the Y, this is, zero, so this red graph goes from zero and then up into infinity. So the range, and zero, it's actually touching here, right? That's the intercept. So it's actually gonna touch at zero, and then it's gonna go up forever. So zero to infinity. Oh, sorry, it's actually touching, so the range is gonna be zero to infinity. Okay, the interval where this thing is increasing. So this is increasing from the interval. And for intervals, we wanna use the x's. Okay, so where is this guy increasing? Well, and we read our graphs from left to right. Well, it's decreasing, 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 hits a zero, and then it starts increasing. So it starts increasing here, and this is the x coordinate, negative one. So the interval of increasing, it starts increasing at negative one, and then it goes on forever, so to infinity. Okay, where is it decreasing? So the interval, it's decreasing. Well, it's coming in from the left, and it's decreasing from the left until it gets to negative one. And again, the intervals I'm talking about are the x-axis intervals. Intervals are x's. So this is decreasing from negative infinity, and then it stops decreasing at negative one. So notice that we're not putting a square bracket on negative one because at negative one, it's neither increasing nor decreasing, it's stopped, okay? So if we wanna think about this as like slope, the slope here is like technically zero. We're not going down or we're not going up. It's like a pause point. So that's why this is not getting the square bracket. Okay, vertex. Well, the vertex of this guy, so what the vertex is, is the vertex is either, depending on the shape of your parabola, the lowest point where we go from increasing to change over to decreasing, or from decreasing change over to increasing. It's the point of change, okay? It's the vertex. It's the bottom point, or it's the 
top point, depending on how it's facing. So in the red graph, the vertex here would be this guy, which we have highlighted as negative 1, 0. So the vertex and the x-intercept are actually the same point in this case. And then the axis of symmetry. OK, axis of symmetry means if we were to draw a line somewhere in this parabola, what line would it be that this parabola would actually fold perfectly onto itself? Like, where's the mirror image line? So the mirror image line would be right here. And the mirror image line is always where the vertex is. The vertex splits the parabola in two. So the axis of symmetry here would be this line. And now we need the equation of this line. The equation of vertical lines are always x equals number. So our axis of symmetry is x equals. And what does x equal? Well, the vertex is at the point negative 1, 0. So that's the x value of negative 1. So my axis of symmetry here is the line x equals negative 1. Okay. Again, your vertex will tell you everything you need to know for axis of symmetry. OK, so that's the analysis on the red graph. And now let's do the analysis on the blue graph. Okay, so red graph, and actually I'm going to take the red graph away real quick. You guys are going to see red graph on, move back. And let's highlight all of our important points again. There's our vertex. Here's our y-intercept. Okay, blue graph. Actually, let me move the blue graph off. So we'll move it there. There's our vertex still. There's our y-intercept. OK, so now we're working with this blue graph. This is the equation negative x squared. Notice how the parabola is now facing down. Minus 3x minus 4. And I've highlighted a couple important points here. But notice, so here's the x-axis here. Notice this graph never crosses the x-axis. OK, so for x-intercepts, we don't have any. So x-intercepts here, what we're actually going to write is d and e. There is none. They do not exist, right? There's no way that this graph will ever hit the x-axis. It's going in the completely opposite way. OK, so there are no x-axis, or sorry, there are no x-intercepts, but there are y-intercepts, right? Here's the y-intercept right here. Where does the graph cross the y-axis? Well, right here, and that's at the point 0, comma, negative 4. So 0, comma, negative 4. There's the y-intercept. The domain, the domain of any quadratic or any polynomial is always negative infinity to positive infinity, right? Forever in the left, forever in the right. Domain is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity for quadratics or polynomials for linears. Quadratics and linears are just a subset of polynomials. Domain is always going to be all the stuff. Range, on the other hand, so range, again, is how far down do we go to how far up do we go? So how far down do we go? Well, we go all the way to negative infinity. OK, and then how far up? So we're down at negative infinity, and we're coming up to this y value here. This y value here, so remember x value, y value. So we're going to go up to height negative 1.75, and it looks like we actually hit negative 1.75, and close that parenthesis off there. OK, range. Interval increasing. OK, well, now it looks like we're increasing until we get to x equals negative 1.5. So we're increasing, we're increasing, we're increasing. So from negative infinity all the way, remember, we're looking at x values, negative infinity all the way to negative 1.5. So we're increasing from negative infinity because we're increasing from the left until we get to x equals negative 1.5. And again, intervals get curves, because actually at 1.5, we're neither increasing or decreasing. We're just like at a pause point there. Interval decreasing, so we've increased up to negative 1.5. Now from negative 1.5 on to infinity, we'll be decreasing. So negative 1.5 on to infinity, we will be decreasing. 
the vertex. Here we have very nicely highlighted negative 1.5 comma negative 1.75.75. Okay, there's our vertex. Don't get confused with vertex. Vertex is an actual point, right? And we write points like this in intervals. These guys look the same, but because it's an interval, this means we're going from this number to this number, from this number to this number. The vertex is actually, hey, here's the address. Here's the actual physical location of this thing. So try not to get those confused. Okay, axis of symmetry. Where is our folding line? Where is our mirror line? It looks like if we folded along the line right here, and this is the line x equals whatever x is at that value. Oh, it looks like x is negative 1.5. So the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1.5. Negative 1.5. Okay, so there we go, right? X coordinate of the vertex, that's also your axis of symmetry. So when we have the picture, you guys can see it's not that bad right? Because we can visually inspect all of our pieces. The our graphing calculators do all this as well. Your graphing calculators will find your vertex, your graphing calculators will find your y-intercept, you know, or you can just visually look, oh, my vertex is here. Oh, my y-intercept is here. Oh, my x-intercepts are here. That's why having the graph is so nice because you can visually inspect it and you can get all of these pieces just by inspections, right? I didn't do any calculations here. So from a graph, it's all visual inspection and knowing what actually are these pieces. What is it that you're looking for? So, but now what if we don't have the graph? Okay, what if the picture goes away? Okay, so like I said, what if the picture goes away? So now the picture's gone. I don't know any of this anymore because I don't have a picture. So all this is gone. And all I have are my equations. How do I figure out all of this stuff except for we're no longer going to look at x-intercepts. That's going to be a future us thing. But how could I figure out all of these other things? How could I figure out the y-intercept from these equations? How could I figure out the domain? How could I figure out the range? How can I figure out where it's increasing? How could I figure out where it's decreasing? How could I figure out where the vertex is of this thing? And how could I figure out where the axis of symmetry is if I no longer have a picture? Okay, well, we're going to use something called vertex form. So we're gonna change these guys into vertex form, and just like, sorry guys, let me flip over my notes. So just like for circles, how we had a standard form and a general form, and standard form told us all kinds of information, and then general form was like a mess. So we're gonna start off in standard form, we're gonna put these guys into vertex form because once we're in vertex form, we can figure out all this stuff. So in general, Vertex form looks like a times x minus h squared plus k, where h, k is the vertex. Now notice there's a minus h here. So for your h, you actually take the opposite of what you see. k, you take the same thing. And again, h controls the horizontal shift of the quadratic, and k controls the vertical shift of the quadratic. So this is all the same as we've seen before. Okay, but how do we get it into vertex form? So how do we go from this to this? It's the same thing that we learned in circles. We're gonna do it completing the square. So I'm gonna change f of x to y. And I'm going to all of my x's to group together and I'm going to get rid of anything that's not an x. So let's subtract two from both sides. 2x squared plus 4x. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, if there's a coefficient in front of x squared, I need to divide it out, but I can't divide both sides by it because I have this y piece here. I just need to factor it out. So this is what I mean. y minus two equals factor it out. 
So x squared divided by 2 is x squared. 4x divided by 2 is 2x. I'm going to leave a space again for this like magic number because that's going to be what our square number is going to be. So now, if we have a 2 factored out here, we need a 2 factored out here. So this is where this gets different and it gets a little weird. So this is actually going to be y minus 2 plus 2 times whatever magic number we put in. Because whatever magic number we put in here, it's not actually just that number. It's that number multiplied by 2, right? So that's why we have this over here, 2 times x squared plus 2x plus whatever our magic number is. Now the completing the square step is the same. So the completing the square step here is we're just going to half it and square it. So half the b term and square it. So half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So what we go on the right, we go on the left. We actually put in 2 times 1 on the left because right, 2 times 1 appears on the right. Okay, so we're actually adding in 2, so then we have to also add in 2 here. Again, this is a little confusing. It's going to come with practice. So if we simplify our left, so minus 2, this is just going to be plus 2, so this is just going to be y. So all I did was just combine like terms. I'm going to complete the square here. So that'll be 2 times x, just take half, plus 1 squared. All I did was factor. And what I'm going to do just for, for ease of notation, I'm going to put a plus 0 here, even though we don't have anything, because all of our numbers here canceled out. Now, what we would have done was added it or subtracted it back over to the other side, but they canceled out here, so we were, we were left with nothing. OK. Vertex then. So there's my h, there's my k. So vertex happens at take the opposite, take the same. So vertex here is at negative 1, 0. So that's the first thing I figured out. Vertex is at negative 1, comma, 0. OK, with the vertex, I can figure out everything else. Domain, always negative infinity to positive infinity. With the vertex, I can figure out my range, because this is the stopping point. The vertex is either the highest point of the parabola or the lowest point, depending on which way we're facing. So this is a positive, which means this is an upwards parabola, okay, which means the vertex then is a minimum point. Okay? So if my vertex is a minimum point, that means the y value of my vertex is the smallest height that I have. Right? So this parabola is going to go from 0 up to infinity. So my range goes from 0, and it actually hits because it's the vertex, up to infinity. OK. Well, again, for increasing, we know that this is a concave up parabola. OK, so that means if we look at it from the left to the right, so there's my vertex. We know that this is an upwards facing parabola, which means as I go from left to right, we're decreasing to the vertex, and then we're increasing. So we're decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1. Okay, so we're decreasing from negative infinity all the way up to x equals negative 1. And then we'll be increasing from negative 1 beyond. So then we're increasing from negative 1 to infinity. After you get your vertex and you know which way your parabola is shaping, it really helps to draw this picture to kind of visualize the rest of this. OK, axis of symmetry then is going to go right through the vertex. So the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 1. Your axis of symmetry will always be x equals whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is. Right? The equation of a vertical line is always x equals number. What's the number? Oh, it's the x coordinate of the vertex. OK, how to find the y-intercept now. The y-intercept happens when you let x equals 0. So y-intercept, let x equals 0, 
then y equals, okay, if we plug in x equals zero is to all of these, we would get two times zero squared plus four times zero plus two. Oh, that's gonna be zero, that's gonna be zero. Y-intercept then is just gonna be two. So the y-intercept then is x equals zero, y equals two, and we're done. So how we ran the exact same analysis from the graph, we ran from the equation. The big thing here is we have to put it in vertex form first. Once you put it in vertex form, you can kind of draw yourself a nice little photo, a nice little picture. Um, and then you can figure out increasing, decreasing, you know where your vertex is, you can find axis of symmetry, you know the range, you know the domain, the y-intercept, just plug in zero for x, figure out what it is, hint, hint, hint. It'll always be your constant term is gonna be your y-intercept. Okay, let's look at the blue graph now. So second example, and it's gonna be a little harder. So let me get rid of actually all of these red stuff entirely. We're gonna switch over to the blue. And this will be the last example, how to do the analysis from the equation. Okay. First step here, I wanna figure out all of this stuff and all I have is an equation. What do I do? Put it into vertex form because then you can get all the information you need. Right now, I'm not really sure. I could find the y-intercept right now. So y-intercept, let x equal zero, then y equals what? Well, if we let x equal zero, this will be zero, that'll be zero, we'll end up with negative four. So negative zero squared, minus three times zero, minus four. So that'll be zero, that'll be zero, we'll just be left with negative four. So our y-intercept will be at zero comma negative four. So y-intercept we don't need the vertex form for. But for everything else we do. Oh sorry, we actually don't need it for the domain either. Domain of all quadratics is negative infinity to infinity. Anything else I can fill in? Not yet. For everything else I need to know the vertex of it because that'll give me all the other pieces of information I need. So vertex form, change f of x to y, x squared minus three x minus four, then get rid of everything that doesn't have an x, add four to both sides, y plus four equals negative x squared minus three x, factor out whatever it is is in front of your x squared and then also, so do it on both sides. So this is gonna look y plus four minus box because there's a minus, right? We're factoring out the negative. So we're factoring out the negative here. So whatever magic thing we're gonna add in here is also gonna be a negative. So this and this need to look the same. And then x squared, if I factor out the negative, that'll be plus three x and then plus our box number. Okay, how do we figure out the box number here? Half it and square it. So half of three, so half of three is three over two, and then square it. Square the top, square the bottom. This is gonna end up being nine over four. So nine over four here. Nine over four here. Fractions are completely fine. We've never really dealt with one of these before. Okay, so this is why we're seeing it now. Um, combine these terms over here. So let's just do a quick fraction addition. Four turns into 16 over four. I'm just making like denominators. Minus nine over four equals negative. Let's factor this. To factor this, we always take half of this, which is just gonna end up being three over two, x plus three over two, and it's positive because that was positive, squared. Let's combine our fractions over here. So y plus 16 over four minus nine over four. This is gonna be 16 minus nine. This is going to be seven over four and positive, so negative x plus three over two squared. Now I need the y by itself. I'm gonna subtract seven over four from both sides. So negative x plus three over two 
squared, subtract it from both sides, so now it's going to be subtract. 7 over 4. Okay, where's my vertex here? My vertex here, there's my h, there's my k. So my vertex here is going to happen, take the opposite at negative 3 halves. When we saw it on the graph, this looked like negative 1.5. These are the same numbers, comma, negative 7 over 4. This is negative 1.75. And when we saw it as a decimal, these are the same numbers. The k, you always take the same sign. The h, you take opposite. So here's our vertex. So here's what our picture looks like. We're opening downwards because we're negative. So our parabola is opening downwards. And our vertex is at negative 3 halves, comma, negative 7 fourths. They're just fractions. Okay, so let's do run through the rest of the analysis. Okay, well the range is gonna go from negative infinity up until, remember this is the y, this is the x. Range is height from negative infinity up until negative seven fourths. So negative infinity up until negative seven fourths and it hits there because it's a vertex point. The interval it's increasing, it's increasing from negative infinity up until negative three halves negative infinity up until negative 3 halves because we're looking at the x. And then we're decreasing from negative 3 halves on into infinity. So we're decreasing from negative 3 halves on to infinity. Our vertex is at this point, negative 3 halves comma negative 7 fourths. The axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. x equals x coordinate of the vertex. This is the equation of a vertical line. Axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3 halves. And we're done. So what we saw today, again, was how to do quadratic function analysis, whether you started off with the graph, in which case you did a visual inspection, and you found all of your pieces, and you pointed them out, and you put them over here. Or we started them off from an equation, in which case your first step is to put into vertex form. This is going to take a little bit of practice to get used to, especially this weird step right here, okay? But I promise you it all equals out, right? Minus this, so we have to do minus this. What we do on one side has to go on the other side. That's why we do this, okay? Put it into vertex form first. Once you get your vertex and you know the shape or you know the direction, then you can go through and figure out the rest of the stuff. So make sure you take your notes, and if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask.